All right, with me now is the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, John Lott. You guys can go and look at his work at crimeresearch.org. John, good to see you. Great to talk to you again. It's been a while. It has been a while, but you have been a busy man. You have an article out just today about the crime data. This is just to give a little context to our viewers. We all remember the infamous fact check in um, in the presidential debate when Donald Trump was talking about increasing crime rates and ABC News was like, there has not been increasing crime rates, according to the FBI. Um, this you have found is false. Can you explain? Right. <clears throat> well, I- the FBI every September puts out its data for the preceding year. Uh, and I noticed just by comparing the uh, Excel files that they put out for last year and this year for 2022 and 2023, that there were large changes that had occurred in their data. They somehow missed uh, mentioning that in their press release or in the report. The only thing In their report on the data, they have a footnote that says that they've revised or, I guess, updated the data for 2022. But beyond that, they mentioned nothing about the change. And what the change is, it amounted to originally, they said that there was a 2.1 percent drop in violent crime in, in 2022. And of course, we've seen news headlines over the course of the last year saying crime is down, but people mistakenly think that it's increasing. Um, And as you mentioned, David Muir in the presidential debate was referring to their data because the data for 2023 wasn't out yet. Uh, But rather than that 2.1 percent drop, it turns out that in 2022, the FBI is now saying that it increased by 4.5 percent, which, by the way, is even larger than what they're currently saying is the drop for 2023, which is 3.5 percent. But Essentially, what's happened is they missed over 80,000 violent crimes. They missed 1,699 murders, uh, over 10,000 rapes, missed 33,000 robberies, and missed 37,000 aggravated assaults. And for property crimes, they missed 198,000 property crimes that they hadn't included in their numbers. And... uh, So, you know, whether they decided not to kind of point this out to people, and I can't really blame the media because I'm sure most of the media just looks at the press release and quickly writes up a story on it. You know, maybe some enterprising guy may actually glance through the report that's there, Uh, but they're not going to go and pull up Excel files uh, from different years to go and make comparisons across them. And so... uh, uh, you know, I was for the article for Real Clear Investigations. Uh, I talked to uh, a guy who headed up the Bureau of Justice Statistics uh, and asked him if if he had if w- one of his reports had had you know gone from a negative to a positive number in terms of crime, uh, whether he would have mentioned it in the press release and he or in the report, and he said yes, definitely he would have mentioned it in both. I mean, that's a pretty big change there, and particularly given how much weight and importance the media has given it over the course of the last year. So when you say that 1,699 murders were missed, what does that mean? How it means do they that miss when that? they've when updated the data? Reports are ignored or they what? Well, it's kind of a black box. They don't explain what happened. They just give you the data. I've reached out to them to ask them to explain what happened, but they're recording uh, an increase of 1,699 murders in 2022 over what they have in 2021. And that increase wasn't there before. If you, when the data was released for 2022, the quote final data for 2022 that was released in September, 2023, Uh, they were missing all these murders. There's this increase in murders that they're now reporting that that they should have mentioned before that are now just being mentioned now, but you'd only see that by comparing these uh, old Excel files. It's so deceptive. It's also, I think, a good reminder when the mainstream media and the left have told us, it's, it's a form of gaslighting, actually, 
over the course of the past year, every time a conservative has said, listen, our cities are facing a violent, an increase in violent crime where our neighborhoods aren't as safe. And the left said, oh, violent crime is going down. Actually, we should follow our guts because some it, I know it can be hard in a debate if you don't have the data. But we know our personal experiences. We know that the violent crime rate is not going down. Right. Look, <clears throat> there's two main types of data that we have on crime. We have the FBI data on reported crime. But we know most crimes aren't reported to police. And we know that there have been issues over the last few years in the rate that crimes are reported to police. And, and then there's something called, from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, which is also in the Department of Justice, called the National Crime Victimization Survey, which surveys 240,000 people a year. So we know about 45% of violent crimes are reported to police. We know only about 30% of property crimes. And... And if you look at the national crime victimization data during the Biden administration, violent crime, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault has increased by 55%, a 42% increase in rapes, a 63% increase in robberies, and a 55% increase in aggravated assaults. There is never in the 51 years that the national crime victimization data has been out there there's never been such a large percentage increase in violent crimes. Uh, the largest previous three-year increase was in 2006, where uh, they recorded a 27% increase. So the increase during the Biden administration is more than slightly more than twice as large than the largest previous increase that was there. And... <clears throat> But, you know, the media has just refused to go and mention uh, the national crime victimization data. The national crime victimization data uh, came out in September last month also. You will look in vain outside of articles in the New York Post and in uh, the Washington Times for discussions about the huge increases that are there. I mean, if you're going to go and ask people, do you care more about the number of crimes reported to police? Or do you care more about what's happening to total crime? <clears throat> I think most people would say they care much more about total crime. And there's reasons why those two have diverged. I mean, I'll give you one example, and that is <clears throat> over the last couple of years, if you call up 911 in many parts of the country, they'll go and ask you if the criminal is still there committing the crime. And if you say no, then they'll say, well, you can come down to the police station and wait in line and we'll have a police report filled out. <clears throat> that wasn't true a few years ago. A few years ago, they would have sent out a police car to, your, to wherever the crime was to take a police report. But since we've had cuts in police budgets, since we've had large numbers of uh, retirements among police officers, uh, we're in a situation now where they just can't do that anymore. And, you know, beyond that, uh, and, and so those wouldn't have been recorded in the FBI data as even reported crimes. But, you know, beyond that, you talk about property crimes. You go into a CVS or a Walgreens uh, in many major cities from Los Angeles and San Francisco to Chicago to, to Washington, D.C. or New York, and you're going to find most or all of everything in the store behind plexiglass. If you want to go and buy something, you have to have some uh, a store clerk come over, unlock it, and stand next to you while you read the ingredients on the packages if you're trying to decide what you're going to go and buy. People know that wasn't true a few years ago. And, you know, uh, and they know that it's very costly for the stores. It's not something that they want to do. But they're being forced to do it because of the amount of theft that's occurring. And so... But it's, the point is, it's not just property crime that people can easily see with their own eyes just in terms of how uh, the stores are having to, to react. Um, you know, they know that it's happening for violent crimes, too. And so while we've had headline after headline over the last year that has used these 2022 numbers to go and claim crime is falling, though people mistakenly think that it's increasing, I think people were right and that the and and at least for reported crime it's now clear it'll be interesting to see now that this information uh about the FBI being unwilling to talk about this or acknowledge this openly before goes viral uh 
what the response from the FBI is going to be uh, officially, because I think they'll create even more news coverage. Um, and also uh, whether the media is going to be running stories saying, whoops, we're sorry, we, you know, what we were telling you over the last year was wrong. Well, you know, I think the media is already in damage control mode on behalf of the Kamala Harris campaign, because there was a segment just last night on CNN where the so-called anchor, I mean, they're all just biased personalities at this point. The so-called anchor was saying, well, a president is not really in control of the crime raid. You can't really blame either Trump or Biden. It's that's a state issue, a local issue when crime rates go up or down. What would you I mean, you've spent your career analyzing this data. What levers move crime rates up or down? What would you attribute as the biggest factors that have that have led to this rise of crime? Well, I don't think it's rocket science about why we've seen the increase in crime. Uh, higher arrest rates, higher conviction rates, longer prison sentences, uh, you know, lay, letting victims defend themselves, all those things make it riskier for criminals to go and commit crime. And unfortunately, we've had cuts in police budgets. We've had massive retirements. We've had uh, left-wing district attorneys who are refusing to prosecute violent criminals. Uh, we've had liberal judges uh, refusing to sentence or to release large numbers of inmates from local jails and prisons. Uh, we've had bail reform. Uh, are there things that can be done federally, even though I've argued and I agree it's largely a local issue? Yeah. One of the things you can do is you can say, look, uh, we're not going to give you all this federal funding unless you go and prosecute these violent criminals that are here. You know, if you're you, in Manhattan... Alvin Bragg has reduced 60% of the felony charges uh, that criminals were facing in 2023. Almost all those were reduced from felonies to misdemeanors. You know, the typical case uh, is what would have been an aggravated assault. What can differentiate uh, an aggravated assault from a simple assault is whether a weapon is used. But he's refusing to go and prosecute people who have firearms offenses. Um, because he says it disproportionately impacts minorities. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, he can make that decision on that. But the problem is, is that if you're reducing all these felonies to misdemeanors or just deciding not to prosecute them at all, it makes it a lot less risky for criminals to go and commit these crimes. And guess what? You're going to have more crimes occurring. So the Biden administration can do things. Biden administration, Kamala Harris... They have, they have, you cannot find them criticizing one of these left-wing prosecutors who are refusing to prosecute violent criminals. Not one time do they make a criticism. Not once do they criticize the bail reform that's there. Not once do they criticize these left-wing judges that are refusing to prosecute these criminals. And so there's lots of things that can be done, uh, both kind of in terms of just the rhetoric but also in terms of uh, withholding funding for places that are refusing to go and, and make it riskier for criminals to commit crime. And beyond that, the types of gun control laws that they keep pushing and regulations are disarming law-abiding good citizens. And that's another way you can make it risky for criminals to go and commit crime. The Biden-Harris administration has put literally thousands of gun dealers out of business uh, for trivial, tiny paperwork typos. You know, you transpose two letters in one word 18 years ago. No other paper, no other typos in the next 18 years. And they'll go back and use that to reopen a case uh, that even the Obama administration had closed in order to take away your license to be able to go and sell firearms. Um, you know, they've used Operation Choke Point, which the Trump administration had ended, Obama had started it, which puts pressure on financial institutions not to go and do business with companies that they don't approve of. And so you have situations from companies in the oil industry to firearms who can't find financial institutions to go and handle the credit cards or the checks for their customers. Are there ways around that? Yeah, sure, but they're usually a lot more costly. And those additional costs may put some of them out of business or at least raise the prices that they have to go and charge uh, their customers. But there's a whole range of different regulations and things that they've done that 
have made it more costly, more difficult for people to be able to go and defend themselves and their families. And so there are things that they can do uh, easily in terms of the gun control issues that would make it riskier for criminals to go and commit crimes. And the commonality that I'm hearing in all of these different things is the Democrat policies have incentivized crime or removed disincentives to crime and Republican policies have made it riskier for criminals to commit crimes. I mean, it's something, it, it really is as black and white as that. And I'm glad it is because we face a choice in less than three weeks of what we want to be, what we want our nation to be. And I think I speak for us all when we say we want America to be safe again. John Lott, thank you for okay. bringing up those Excel spreadsheets and analyzing that data and sharing it with our country. You've done a service to Thanks. us well, all. People, and I'll talk to you again soon. People can find more at our website at crimeresearch.org, crimeresearch.org. Thank you very much. We'll drop that URL in the description to this episode. John, thanks for being here. Thank you.